welcome to Weekend Project. Thank you for joining us. We are working on a fantastic project that's going to take you throughout the whole year. 365 days of fabulous fabric fun. Let me tell you. So I have, I've been loving all the um, temperature quilts and uh, temperature uh, cross stitches and stuff like that. Actually, the first came about when uh, Miss Allison was here and I saw her working on her cross stitch uh, temperature uh, project. I thought that was really cool. So instead of just doing something plain, I thought it'd be do something fun, right? Because we like to do something fun around here. Um, I love houses and I love trees. So what I combined it was the two of them. So what this is actually going to be a two quilt project in the end. Okay, so make sure you do all your blocks. You can section it out six months and six months as I have. I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing January, February, March, October, November, and December all together as into one quilt because of the cooler months around here for us, us in Nova Scotia. And then for the warmer months, I'm going to do April, May, June, July, August, and September. So that whole chunk is going to be together in that section with those colors and then the other section for the other six months okay so what I have here is a just a basic you're gonna do this yourself foundation paper piecing block you're gonna make your own why because it's your creation so I have a lovely little tree here. This is a four and a half by four and a half, like, like this It's going to be a finished four inch block. So, and I have a four and a half by four and a half inch ruler. If you had a five inch ruler, that would be fine too. You could use that to help aid you. I am using what I have in my shop to help aid me. So this is going to be completely scrap, whatever I've got on stash. It's going to, I might be making my own little roofs in different colors or my house is in different colors, but it's going to be busted. So I do have a degree of colors, what I'm going to work with for what is highs and the lows, because we don't have a very drastic here where we are I mean the lowest it went down here was 40 minus 42 Celsius last year but that's that's the coldest I've seen in a very very long time uh, and it didn't even get plus over 30 degrees Celsius here much for throughout the summer okay we had a very damp summer so I'm taking my ruler whatever I'm going to use as my template for my house and my tree I'm going to trace it out onto regular photocopy paper or uh, whatever other paper that you may have you can recycle reduce reuse right so I'm taking and I'm tracing it around. Now I want for the top of my tree, so we're gonna go break this down here. I don't want to tip it off. I don't wanna break it off. I've already had that when I was doing the, I was doing some testing blocks here. Okay, and I kept missing the top of my tree. And I was like, what is going on here? And I'm like, I didn't allow enough space for it to cross over and then allow for a seam allowance at the top. So I'm like, okay, all right, well, we can fix this, right? So to make sure I'm going to make sure I have a top to my tree, I'm going to come down a half an inch. So I'm going to mark it here at the top. I'm going to come down one half an inch and I'm going to put a full straight on line. In the middle of that, I'm going to mark the halves, like where it is on the half of the ruler, up, down, and sideways. So here's the half on the up, here's the half on the down, here's the half on the side. And here's the half on the other side. Just a little mark for reference, okay? So we want the top of our tree to come straight to here, okay? So that way we know that this part here is going to be allowed for the seam allowance and the top of the tree, okay? So we want to make our trunk now. So we're going to make the lines for our trunk. We're going to come up inch and a half uh, whatever whatever makes you happy for a trunk or tree you can have a little stumpy wumpy one here or you can have a nice big long tall thin one so I think we're gonna go about an inch and a half so we're gonna come up here and just do a little line okay and then on the either side of our middle line here we're gonna go about an inch to or sorry half an inch to three quarters of an inch to mark out for our tree trunk okay that's a big trunk it doesn't have to be so big you can make it a little bit smaller if you like maybe we'll just go half inch on either side okay okay so come in a little bit of a quarter okay so this could be the tree so that's going to be your number one piece okay that's going to be number one i'm going to draw this line across the top here okay and this is where our tree is going to be built. But we don't want it to come straight down like this unless that's what we want. That's completely up to you. So we're going to come over about, let's from the center, we're going to come over an inch and a half and we're going to make a little line, okay? From that center mark, come over an inch and a half and make a little line, okay? So now we have those one, two, three lines. We just want to join them to make a triangle so we can make our little tree, okay? 
like I said, if you wanted it narrower, you could put your little marks here. So you're going to have a nice straight tree like this. I, I like a chubby tree. I like chubby trees. I cannot lie. There we go. So there's our one piece, our two piece, our three piece, our four piece, our five, and our six. Now we, when we go to put this together, we're going to do this as a one section and do this as another section. And then we're going to sew those two together. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to cut this out with paper safe scissors. Okay. Just on the outside. Yeah, I started with the tree first because it's usually my favorite. <laughs> but same principle plays for the house. Let's do a house too. So while we're, while we're here, so we don't get distracted by shiny objects because we're squirrels. Okay. And again, this is where I'm going to come in about a half an inch to mark for where the center of my house is going to go. Okay. And then for my house, here, there's the one I had previously, okay? So you see, I came down, and then I built out from the center of approximately uh, my door, where I wanted my door to be. I think that one, which way we may measure on that one? Uh, three quarters, okay? So about there. Okay, and then do the same on this side. Make sure you're doing it tall enough to be a door. Self coupling. And your foundation paper piecing this, so it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit easier. Okay. Alright, and then this is a line you're going to want to extend all the way across. Okay. And then you're going to come up about uh, at three quarters of an inch to give yourself your top part for your door. Okay. And then there's your roof is going to go right to the edge, okay, from that center dot right to the outer edge. So as we're going to put this together, this is going to be your number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? And that's going to give us a cute little house that looks just like that. I am using just bright, differently colors for the doors of the houses because I do want a little pop of color here every, every now and again when it comes to these. When it gets into the you know negatives and it stays there for so long, I don't want it all just to be blue. All right, I want shades of blue, lights and darks, and so on and so forth. If it gets darker, I mean the colder it gets, the darker the blue that's going to be. Okay, so now we can take our two templates that we just made, and we can make a, a house and a tree. Okay. First, let's make the house. So we've got our nice brightly colored door here. So what I like to do is I like to pre-fold all the lines to make sure uh, it's easier for me to stitch down, okay? So I'm gonna fold where it is between the one and the two, fold between it where it is in between the one and the three, and then fold where it is between those sections and then the one above for four. And there again, fold on the line. You're just kind of like giving yourself a little bit easier time once you get the fabric attached to be able to fold over, okay? So you can reuse this as many times as you need, but if you are one of those people that do like to sew through, then just go and copy like crazy, copy pasta like crazy, whatever you like to do, okay? So here's my door. I'm going to take this. I'm going to put it on the back side of my fabric, okay? See how it's there? I'm going to make sure it's going to cover that bit, okay? Now what I do is I put a pin in to stabilize it. Of course, I moved everything out of the way because <laughs> I was trying to tidy up. <laughs> okay. And I'm making sure that I have enough seam allowance on both sides of that um, project. Okay. okay. And now we're going to fold on the two line and we're going to use our house, our other little house piece that we have for that. So I'm trying this a little smaller here and then we're going to line that up so that the right sides are together we're flipping it here and then it extends past the fold of this piece of paper okay 
all right? And then you're gonna sew right next to that piece of paper, right next to it. You're just gonna drop your stitches right next to it. So that's gonna give you your quarter inch seam allowance, okay? If you wanna make sure that you're right on and you don't wanna get distracted, you can trim that up, all the extra bits on the outside, and then you know for sure that's a quarter inch. Okay, so we're gonna come down and we're gonna go set our other machine. Because my door is light, I'm pushing towards the darker side of the fabric. Okay, so I'm going to line this up here. Okay, so it's lining up, and I'm going to use where those lines are. That is where my seam allowance is, because that's where it's supposed to be. I'm making sure I'm allowing enough seam allowance at the top to be able to sew that next piece on at the top part there. Okay, so let's just pop that a pin right there, and then I'm going to fold down on the three. Oops, make sure it's a little bit straight, it's a little bit wonky there. Okay, and then I'm going to take my other piece that I have for the back. Uh, it's probably not going to be big enough. Okay, so let's do this. Hopefully, is that going to be big enough? Mm -hmm. Yes, it'll go a little taller on it. Okay, so now that it's like that, okay, I'm going to fold it. And then again, we're just going to stitch right next to that line, right next to the fold of the fabric. And then, of course, we're going to use our ruler that we used as our original template to be able to trim it all out in the end. Okay, so we know they're all going to be the same size. So now we sew that, flip this out, flip this out. Okay, so we know that's all there. A little, there we go. Oh, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay, now we're going to fold here. And then we're going to trim this. You, there's a quarter inch uh, seam allowance rulers for this specific project. It has like a little lip on it, but you can certainly just use your regular ruler. You don't know. You don't need no fancy tools. You can you can do FPP. You can make your own pattern. Okay. Now let's try to trim off a little bit off the side there. Okay. All right. So there. Now we're going to do our top piece. It should be a nice big chunk like this. Put it right sides together. So I'm laying it right down on top. Right, see, just like that. And I'm going to sew right next to that fold. I did a lot of foundation paper piecing on the Peacock project. Um, it was definitely a learning experience. And that was a lot of paper to rip off in the end. And um, yeah, I thought we could, we could do something a little bit different here. <laughs> All right, so once that's um, uh, sewn onto the top, we're gonna flip that out. For, and then we're gonna give it like a little press, make sure everything's staying where it needs to, okay. Line this back up using those seam allowance uh, stitches as our guidance, okay. You could use some other fabric glue too, but I didn't want to get any extra other glue or stuff on my, my project. Okay, so there I'm going to take that for the top of my house part and I'm going to start working on my roof. So I'm putting that on the fold. I'm going to come in with my ruler and trim to a quarter of an inch. Okay. I'm going to flip it back out and I'm going to press the six line down. And then that's where I'm going to, oh, sorry, nope, sorry. I need to uh, attach the root part first. I skipped to the outside edge, not sure how that was going to happen, but <laughs> apparently I was building my roof a little bit different. Okay, so here is my rooftop, nice gray. And I've got white on whites and whites for my background fabric for throughout this whole project. I might switch it up to light blues if I can find enough of a similar color to do those April, May, June, July, August, and September months because they they'll have nice blue skies, hopefully. Okay, so now we're going to flip this back out. Okay, and give that a little press. Having nice, crisp, 
seams uh, is very helpful with this project. Okay, so now we're on. Now we're on to it to the six part. <laughs> I was like, if all in the back, there's nothing there. And something is wrong here. Okay, and then we're just going to trim to the quarter inch. Okay, and get some of our back back crown pieces here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make sure I got my right side. Yep. Okay. And then I'm just going to slip it under here, giving myself ample room to be able to flip it for that spot. Okay, scoop a little seam right there, and now we're going to come down here. So right next to that hole. it out we'll give it a little press we're gonna try and press to the dark with that white okay so kind of press to the dark oh that's looking so cute okay so I'm leaving that there oops, oops, oops. there we go and then again for the seven the last piece for the house fold it quarter inch seam trim okay Grab another piece. Oh, it's going to be too small or too big? I mean, too small. And always have a piece of black fabric so you can really see which is the top and which is the, not the top when it comes to white on white. <laughs> That's the, one of my, uh, my, as I look at it, or you don't see it until it's already sewn. No, no, darn it. You have that right next to the hole. Okay. Now we're folding this out. We can take our pin out at this point in time and give it a good pressing. Okay. Take our pin out. Give our little house a press. And then we take our ruler that we've been using as our template. And we line it up where we like it. And of course we have plenty of room at the top of our house. So we're not gonna miss the top of our roof there at all. And then we trim around the block. Be careful with your fingers, keep them away. You can use a uh, spin cutter for this, a little rotary mat would be good too. I am just holding it very firmly in the center, keeping my fingers away from the blades at all times. Clean up everything, and then boom, you got yourself a cute little house. Very colorful house too. And then the tree is pretty much the same way. Okay, so take our little template, move that stuff off to the side here. We're gonna just start with the base of our tree. So we're gonna fold, do some pre-folding. Folding on the lines. Now I want you to have have a lot of fun with this. If you want to use a fabric line, go ahead and use a fabric line. The whole point was to pretty much bust what we have, use what we have. There's no need to buy any more when you pretty much have like a, a, a selection of, of stuff to work with, right? Most of us anyways. If you don't, contact me, okay? <laughs> I'm going to take this piece is going to be my trunk. So I'm just going to kind of plop it in there. It'll get trimmed what I don't need. It'll get trimmed. I will probably put it that way. Okay. And now for my background piece, I'm going to need for number two there. So I'm going to make sure that's folded. Okay. And then we're going to trim this to a quarter. And then we're going to take our background piece. Oh, oh I had it already here to do, to do and line it up on the side. Okay, just like that. Line that back up again so that's why I didn't pin it and I meant to. And then we have ourselves that quarter inch seam allowance right there, okay? So pop a pin in there. And then we'll sew down there and then we'll sew on the other side. So for the colors that I have for my lows are grays, blues, greens, purples, oranges, and yellow. And then for my highs, I have like light gray, light blue, light green, pinks, uh, reds, 
and um, and obviously like light purples and stuff like that. So it'll be lighter for the higher temperatures and um, like those sorts of colors. That's that's my goal. I mean, I have a lot to use. It's going to be very colorful no matter what. So, all right, so now we have that piece there. We're just going to flip it. This is where you get to be your creative, right? Challenge yourself this year. Okay, so once that's there, pop our pin. We spread, we spread out where two was, okay? And then we're going to fold where three is. Trim. Add this other little piece. Just a quarter inch. Slip this piece underneath. And then just sew right on down, right next to the fold. And the fun part is, even more so, is that you've built the block yourself, right? It's your house the way you like it. Or your tree the way you like it. Okay, so given that, since I got a little shorter on that side, reposition it using the seams as the lines okay so that's the first part now we want to build the second part which is four five and six okay so you're going to start with the center of your tree background background so here's the center of our tree but actually let's take that off for a second so we can use the top part it's a nice flat piece okay i'm gonna manually just give it that quarter inch Seam allowance right there at the bottom so it can attach to the first piece. Okay, make sure we got enough. Pop our pin in the center. Okay, and then we're gonna go work it on five first. Oops, and then we're gonna take our background piece should cover it that's the most complicated part with um, um, foundation paper piecing is making sure you have enough fabric and I do I have lots I have lots especially lots of whites on whites okay stitching right next to the fold all the way up to the top taking this Spreading the white part out, which is the background. Okay. Now we want to go and do number six. Just folding, trimming, lining up, and then sewing. Okay. I know I've got extra big pieces here. But line that up. Take the pin out a little bit more on the fabric, pin back in, and then sew on down. Right. Now I get to press this out. And then we're going to even it up on the bottom here, the bottom of the tree, okay? So we're just going to kind of scoot it off to the side there and scoot it off to the side there, which is evening it out. Now we're going to take this one that we had. First, we'll give it a nice flat edge because that's much easier to work with. And we're going to put it on the base of our tree, just like that, okay? And hopefully it's kind of somewhat center and then just stitch all the way across and try and keep those grays towards the center for the trunk and then we give it a little iron and then we use our template that we built our tree with in the first place well, it was a nice tall one nice tall skinny one and that's the fun part. You can really do uh, anything you like. Okay, so here's our tree. Use our template. 
making sure we have enough at the top to cover our the, the, when we go to add to the top row or another row or whatever. We're not going to use the top, lose the top of our tree. So here we can scoot them up there. There we go. And then we just trim that out and we use all the other little bits for the little projects. Okay. Do, do, do. Pressing firmly. And there we go. We have a house and a tree. Isn't that cute? Oh my goodness. Now we just put them together. Okay. Just like these guys. So our temperatures for January are supposed to be high of one and low of six. And then January 1st, is, or sorry, January 2nd is minus one, minus five. Highs and lows, one and minus six. So they're going to be around the same colors or at least tones and stuff like that. So they should look relatively nice and match. And I like the tree to break it up. I don't want always all the houses together or whatever. And the tree, you can just have a lot of fun with it. Uh, make a green, make a purple, make a whatever color you like. I, I like, I'm going to use my green, greens and grays and browns and all sorts of fun stuff to make the trees. So you can just put so two of those together. So each quilt will have 182 blocks, okay? And that that includes your house and tree. So you're going to do a house and a tree every time, every day. I'm probably just going to work maybe a week at a time between the houses and the trees. And when you're spacing them that out, you can have a house, a tree, a tree and a house or you can have whatever you like there is going to be uh, I think five extra blocks that you will have to add throughout the the project but uh, and you can save those for like birthdays or something specific for holiday or what have you so so FPP all year long it's gonna make you two quilts if you do it this way Okay, it's going to be two quilts that are approximately 56 by 52 or something like that. Oh no, uh, 72 by 80. I'm sorry, my, my mistake there. Okay, and then you just sew those two together. And then we've got two days already. And it should be a really nice size project when finished. 72 by 80 is a fantastic quilt. Okay, and there we go cute build houses with me <laughs> come construct <laughs> use your f fabric stash and, and have some fun I'll put uh, some of the uh, details of like what I'm using for colors and stuff like that um, and size wise in the description below okay so don't don't uh, not miss on that and then if you want to make sure you're keeping along or keeping track of your uh, the highs and the lows you can use uh, um, what am I thinking uh, Excel or even just a notebook. I'm just going to use a notebook, but there is other forms out there. I think even the fat quarter shop has a temperature uh, up and down for that one. Okay. So come stitch with me temperature throughout the year, 365 days of fabric fun.